Um, so first of all, I would like to start with an overview about PET. So here you, you, you can see a representation uh, of what we can measure with uh, the other imaging modalities, uh, including fMRI, structural MRI, EEG, MEG, NRS, and DTI for white matter. With PET, we can measure actually many, many things. So we have some tracers that allow us to measure what's going on in the blood as perfusion in terms of oxygen metabolism. We have uh, tracers that allow us to measure uh, the metabolism of energy substrates like glucose metabolism or ketone metabolism in neurons and astrocytes. We then have tracers uh, to measure um, neurotransmission or receptors at the level of postsynaptic terminals. And this is quite uniquely to, unique to PET. We also have treasures to target presynaptic terminals and measures expression of neurotran, uh, of receptors, again, neurotransmission, neurotransmission transporters, and, and so forth. Uh, we also have tracers to measure pathology, like tau amyloid pathology, and also inflammatory processes uh, and reactive uh, astrocytosis. Uh, so how does this work? Uh, so, in respective of what we are measuring, PET really is uh, based on the in, on uh, radioligands. So, what we have is that we have the injection of a radioligand, and the radioligand is a tracer that is uh, essentially a, a ligand uh, labeled with a radioactive isotope that, in the case of FDG PET, is fluorine 18. After the injection, uh, this molecule reaches its target uh, in, in a certain system. Uh, in the case of FTG PET, this target is exokinase. So FTG, the tracer, which is an analog of glucose, gets phosphorylated by exokinase trapped in the brain. And thanks to the isotope, we have emission of a positron that annihilates with an electron, generating uh, two gamma rays that are detected. And this is what we're measuring and allow us to, to say something about the biological process of interest. Uh, of course, this is a tracer, which means that we are measuring something in the system without alterating it. So we're just tracing it. Uh, the case of FTG, our tracer looks like this. So our tracer is exactly an, uh, an analog of glucose. So it looks exactly like glucose. The only difference is that an hydroxyl group is uh, substituted by uh, fluorine 18, which is our radioactive isotope that allows us to trace uh, the tracer, essentially. And one important thing to note that you will uh, um, uh, hear more about during Estelle's talk about patient setup is that uh, uh, since our tracer is an analog uh, of glucose, it competes with glucose uh, for phosphorylation by exokinase, which means that we have to be very careful with the glucose levels within the patient when we do this exam, because if there is too much or too little glucose in the patient, the uh, competition between tracer and the actual glucose uh, will, uh, let's say, give some problems in the measurement due to competition for the same substrate, and this will alter the results of the exam. So what are we measuring with glucose? As I said, uh, our, when our tracer reaches our target tissue, uh, it gets phosphorylated by exokinase. So the first, and this is the first step in glycolysis. So the tracer follows the same destiny as normal glucose, but since uh, it lacks an hydroxyl group, after this step, this first step, uh, it just gets trapped in the neuron or astrocytes and nothing else happens. So we have something that behaves like glucose, but then uh, tr traces, it traces the process of interest and then just gets stuck, let's say, in our tissue. And then we can, that's why we can measure it. Um, one important thing is that, as you can see here, we're just really measuring the first step in the glycolysis, which is again, uh, phosphorylation by isokinase. Uh, why we say that this is glucose metabolism? Because this first step represents a gatekeeping step in the glycolysis, which means that if we measure uh, the rate of phosphorylation of FEG by exokinase, we are essentially measuring a proxy for the whole glycolytic process, whether it is oxidative metabolism in neurons or uh, aerobic glycolysis in astrocytes. So this is really and say reflecting um, the, the whole uh, overall glucose metabolism, which is, by the way, the main substrate of energy metabolism in the brain. So it's really about energy. But it's not just about energy because, I mean, 
what do we use this energy for? So it has been calculated that uh, the majority of energy in the brain gets used for uh, processes that are really related to synaptic this, um, transmission. So it's really about, it's mostly about neural communication. So neural communication is what really keeps, uh, uses most of the energy that our brains need. And you can see here uh, on the right, a recent study by Itman and colleagues that showed in vivo in the fruit fly that uh, ATP, which is again, uh, what um, our energy, uh, our, source of, our source of energy into which glucose is converted at the end of the uh, glycolytic process. So ATP, uh, um, is, is the level of ATPs really strictly follows the level of intracellular calcium, which is um, a proxy for uh, neural communication, synaptic transmission. Uh, so when we stimulate uh, uh, tissue in a fruit fly, brain tissue, we have an increase in intracellular calcium, meaning that neurotransmission is going on, there is an action potential passing in the neurons, and this is really coupled to an increase in energy. So really when we measure glucose metabolism, we are really getting a window into what is going on in the patient brain in terms of neural communication. And this is why in patients with disorders of consciousness, we do this exam. Uh, so we, the patient doesn't have to do anything. There is no task required to get, of course, a resting state at EGPET uh, image. That is quite informative, as you will see throughout the workshop. And uh, this allows us to get, again, a direct window into the brain. So we're circumventing any possible motor, uh, attentional, or language bias that doesn't allow the patient to, to communicate with us, to interact with us. And we can really get insights into what is going on into the brain. And this is the, 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 the overview of the workshop. Uh, actually, we will start with Tommaso Volpi, who will give an, uh, us some information about the, the kinetics of the tracer. So what happens after the tracer gets injected and how we can quantify. And we will start with this talk uh, because uh, then you will understand why the setup of the patient is done in the way it is done. And this is something that uh, Claire, uh, that, uh, sorry, Estelle will talk about. So that is it. Uh, from my side and thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you will enjoy the workshop.